The Olympics challenge has come to an end. And just as we've done with previous challenges, the Maven team will be reviewing finalist entries to give you insight into what makes a challenge submission a winner. Once we've made our way through entry reviews and the Olympics challenge winner is chosen, we'll jump to our medalist winners. Let's begin. The first entry for review is Vina Abella. And I'll start it off. In many of the entries we received, I saw a number of uh, visualizations that didn't have a clear purpose or maybe had a purpose, but seemed to uh, live on an island. In Vina's entry, I see headlines and a theme around which the visuals are organized. Her story is easy to pick up and the visuals are all clean. Then she wraps it up with an interesting factoid. From start to finish, she keeps her dashboard clean, organized, and interesting. For these reasons, I think this one is a, is a winner. Yeah, I really like Vina's as well for a lot of the same reasons. Uh, I just had a lot of fun reading this one. Um, tells a lot of very interesting stories top to bottom. I think uh, she did a, a really good job with the timeline at the top, uh, especially calling out those gaps you know, during World War I and World War II, as well as the dips due to things like Great Depression and the boycotts. Um, like the stacked area showing gender parity, which is a theme that a lot of people uh, really focused on. And then, you know, really following a lot of the data viz best practices that we've talked about, things like using selective color in that line chart on the right, uh, really drawing attention to one specific story and eliminating extra clutter and noise. Um, and then again, you know, I love the, did you know, kind of call out at the bottom. Um, I learned a lot and I had fun reading this report. So I thought it was a really good submission. Yeah, one of the fun things about this too is specifically the height of the medalist, um, how they vary by sport. Like a, there were a lot of dashboards that took an approach at looking at height, um, but did, didn't necessarily look at it as a distribution based on, on the sport. It was just averaging all you know, athletes and then showing that distribution of height across all athletes, not specific to the sport. So that was a clever way of, of adding that in. Yeah, this, this was one of my favorites too. I think um, since Enrique isn't on right now, I'll, um, I'll just voice for him. I think he, he would probably say uh, he wished the bronze, silver, gold um, in the medals by country chart was reversed. So, so gold is on the baseline, but you know, minor, um, minor feedback on this one. I, I absolutely love the storytelling. I, I think this was a fantastic entry. So. Awesome, guys. A lot of positive feedback. Moving on to Armand. Uh, so the design here is such a, a strong point. I don't think anybody will argue with me on that. The use of the Olympic rings as donut charts was attempted by many in, in the challenge. Um, but I think Armand was the only one to make it the focus of like his entire entry and then pull it off just so well. I also think this is a, a great example of doing more with less. Like there's only five categories here and depending on the user selection, it's all related to a single country, uh, which means we're getting a limited amount of information regarding the selected country. Um, however, I think this makes information all the more memorable and easy to digest. Yeah, the thing that jumped out at me was first and foremost, just the, the simplicity of, of the design, which at first glance, it seems sparse, but then when you look into it, um, he's showing a lot of, of interesting metrics here. And what I like the most about it, um, two things. One, he introduced this metal to athlete ratio, which is a really smart way to compare countries on a little bit more of an apples to apples basis. Um, and also I love these additional call outs kind of associated with each of those rings and data points. Um, with just an interesting insight or tidbit associated with it. So um, really good balance of uh, focus, but also including depth without overwhelming the user. All right, great feedback. Uh, we'll be moving on to uh, Toho. So, uh, you know, John brought up Enrique before, he's not here. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna bring him up again. He's been posting a lot and I hope people are following him because he's got great tips regarding visualizations, right? And um, one of the things he recently posted really struck out to me, right? And, and what he posted was, I can't stress this enough, do not add variety at the expense of clarity, right? And then he went on to explain a little bit more about this in, in the post. 
Um, and I think this is something that Soho executed well. Um, while there's a variety of charts, um, they all fit their use case as well. And I don't get the impression that simpler charts would have told uh, his story better where he didn't say use something simple like bar charts. Does anybody else wanna add anything? Yeah, I'll, I'll throw in, I, I just think each one of these individual charts is um, very easy to interpret. And um, I, th I think, you know, uh, we have the, the correct ordering of uh, gold, silver, bronze that, that Enrique would want to see. Um, I, I love the, the distribution, uh, the, the two top charts, um, the age distribution, and then showing the, um, the, the gender story and showing that as a percentage of 100 that it is kind of getting close to parity. So there's a lot of people attack that story, but I, I like the way that this one was done. Um, so yeah, I, th I just think everything on here was really clear, just like you said, Frank, uh, really easy to interpret. So I think this was a really, really strong entry. Awesome. Thanks for that, John. Uh, so moving on to uh, Gustav. Uh, so like Vina's entry, I think this one is just really well organized. And I like the color scheme. I definitely get sci-fi vibes from it, which I personally like. Um, at the same time, this is a lot to take in. Um, I think the analysis on metal wins by country take up a good amount of the uh, real estate. And that's where the draw of the dashboard is. Uh, however, I had the top bar and line chart um, that presents a number of entrants and countries participating been excluded. I think this would have been a much uh, stronger entry and I would have been able to uh, pick up the story elements without wasting so much time scanning and trying to figure everything out. Yeah, I, I had similar feedback to this one. I think design-wise, it's it's extremely well done and well executed from a pure visual standpoint. I think um, to your point, Frank, there's a lot here and it, it really takes time to drill in and see all these stories that are emerging. That said, I will say once I really dug in, I, I actually really enjoyed uh, going through a lot of the detail. I think breaking it out by summer and winter uh, was smart because there are very different types of trends that emerge. Um, and one thing I'll call out, I think, um, I think he used maps better than anyone else that we saw. A lot of people kind of presented too much information geospatially where it's every single country uh, with you know color saturation or, or legends, and it made it very hard to pick out what the point was. Whereas here, it's just I'm going to tell you about the top three. You know, and for for summer, it's USA, Russia, Germany. For winter, it's Germany, Russia, Norway. And here's some stats associated with each of those countries. So um, I think that was my favorite part of this was uh, just really smart use of of those maps at the bottom. All right, so uh, moving on to Ihan, otherwise known as Mr. Batman, at least to me. Uh, so I think this is the only returning finalist uh, this challenge. And from a style standpoint, I'm glad he made it. Like I could easily see this inside of a magazine like Times providing like, interesting factoids and just interesting stuff about the Olympics in general. Um, I didn't take offense to the variety of charts. Obviously they're just there for variety sake. At least it feels that way to me. Um, but because this looks more and feels more like a infograph and a dashboard, um, I didn't, like I said, I didn't take much offense to the variety of charts in this entry. Does anybody yeah, it's, it's, it's really a, a beautiful piece here. Um, you know, clearly both analytic skills and, uh, and graphic designer chops too. Um, which is is really impressive to see how you tell the story. I think a, a couple of them, um, the charts here, they took me a while to get my head around. Like I really had to think about them here. Um, so I'd say that that would probably be the um, the, the downside. But um, but I, I think it was a really strong entry, and and like you said, just visually fantastic, and it's it's going to drop drop people's eyes really quickly in there. Cool. All right, so moving on to uh, our final finalist, and this is uh, Azinieka. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, so in this entry, there's tons that can be picked up, um, but it requires 
so much energy to, to do it, right? Like, I really wanted to like it. There's a lot here. There's tons of information coming at me. Um, and perhaps something like Better Legends would have helped a good deal. But I ran into this issue with nearly every visualization um, on this dashboard where I needed to look at the legend and really process what I was looking at. Uh, to me, at least, it made for an awkward and, and somewhat frustrating experience um, reviewing the entry. And there's some things I really like about this one, um, particularly starting at the top. I thought that kind of diverging bar chart is, is actually really interesting, well done, because it packs a ton of information into that one visual. You've got the breakout of, of summer, winter, and you can really see a comparison of volume. You've got the timeline view, which other entries had, had done quite well, which you know, shows certain years being canceled due to certain events, which are clearly called out. And you also have um, the light and the dark shading to show the gender distribution at the same time. So I thought that visual at the top was a really good way to, to pack a lot of information into a pretty concise visual and, and to do it without uh, being overwhelming. Um, I thought the next visual with, with the medals was, was interesting and well done. I think where it started to get a little bit too complicated for me was the bottom half. Um, if you really sit with it, there are some interesting stories here about when certain events appeared, when they, they disappeared. Um, but those bottom two charts, for me, it just felt like too much time invested in understanding what was being represented there. Um, and then, you know, that, that scatter, that plot at the bottom, uh, mapping participating athletes to medals. Um, I wasn't really getting a clear insight there. Um, so I, I felt like there could have been a better use of that real estate personally. Yeah, I personally loved the, 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 that first visual um, or the, the visual on the, the to the start, the, the second half of the dashboard there where it goes through the timeline there. Um, but I, I agree with the feedback there where it, it takes a little bit of time to really understand that. This is the type of visual to me that would be really well served as a deep dive, right? Where you wanted to go into more detail about the timeline, um, you know, when certain events happened and, and really dig into a lot of that detail here. So I thought it was a clever way to show that, but um, there's a, a lot of information to take in um, within this kind of core dashboard here. Yeah, cool. So that, that was our um, last entry um, from the, the finalists. Um, in total, we had six, and I heard at least the, uh, from what I see and, and had heard, the most positive feedback coming from the first two entrants, right? Uh, and that takes us back to Vina and Armand. How do you guys feel about the, the feedback? Do you agree with me? I do. So. Yeah, I know who I'm voting for. It's, it's one of those two. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I think it's safe to say uh, that this will be a head-to-head -head between Armand and Vina. And if everybody would go ahead and enter their vote in the chat, and on three, we'll hit enter. Everybody have their uh, entry in? Mm -hmm. Typed up? You guys ready? All right, on three. One, two, three. Nice. Unanimous. Yeah. I don't think we've ever had unanimous before. No way. No. <laughs> no, I think this is a first. Vina takes it. Overall yeah. winner. Sweet. So congratulations to, to Vina. Let's give her a round of applause. All right. So now that we've chosen the Olympics challenge winner, Vina Vela, uh, we'll be moving on to our medalist winners. As a reminder, each entry in the Olympics challenge gave the entrance country a point. The three countries with the highest points earned its members an additional chance to win. Moving on to the gold winner, India, with 91 points. After careful review, the team picked entrant Tridar as the winner for India. Yeah, so um, Tridar here, you know, won this because it's this dashboard kind of the more you dug into it the more interesting it, it really became with the story and some of the insights there um it it really hit a lot of the interesting um 
kind of call outs and different different pieces from the data set um, did a really nice job visualizing it as well. Awesome. In second place, taking silver with 26 points is Nigeria. After much consideration, the team decided on Akinjimi as a winner for Nigeria. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can speak to this one a little bit. Um, so I, I like the, the age distribution, the way that was put together there. I thought that was really interesting. Uh, and, and all of these uh, were just pretty easy to interpret charts. Um, and then again, it had uh, some really good insights called out here down the right-hand rail. So uh, all in all, I think um, from all the ones that, uh, that I saw from uh, Nigeria, this one was one that really stood out to me. So uh, congratulations. Cool. In third place, taking bronze with 13 points is a U.S. Also, after a detailed review, the team chose Shanti as a winner for the U.S. I can speak to this one. So I, I really like this. I'm kind of a, a sucker for uh, the entrants that really hone in on a specific story. Um, and I think that's something Shanti did really well here. Um, and again, we talked about this with a handful of other entries as well, but I really loved uh, instead of focusing on metal volume, which is kind of a biased metric in a lot of ways, um, it was really the focus shifted to uh, that metal to athlete ratio. And when you take that approach and use that as your KPI or your metric to compare countries, it tells a very different story. And in this case, uh, for 2016, Jamaica actually kind of was the most successful country um, by that standard. So. I thought it was it was simple, but it was clean and a really smart use of, of metrics to make those country comparisons. So um, it's a very unique entry and, and one of my personal favorites. Awesome. Well done to each of these countries and their ambitious entrants. And a huge thanks to everyone who participated and put their country in the running. We'll see everyone again soon. Great work, everyone. Congrats, everybody.